writers, agents, and publishers, for the first time since the Good Book Press, find themselves lost in a maze of mystery as technology alters the shape of the publishing industry. Searching for Answers is a group of writers throwing pop culture, writing, and publishing into a crucible of clarity, passion, and humor. This group is the right path. In this episode, the Right Pack is going to explore the often asked, asked question, if I'm a writer, why do I have to sell all my work for myself? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Right Pack Radio. This is your host, producer, and author of Crazy Things, David Allen Lucas. Um, president of St. Louis Writers Guild, president of Winding Trails Media, voice actor, martial arts instructor, and all-around crazy person. And with me today is, of course, my lovely co-host. Hi, I'm Kathleen Kayende. I write speculative fiction under my own name and romance under the name Kaseka and Vida. Um, you can find my work in the uh, Hugo-nominated uh, anthology Connections to Octavia Butler. Uh, well, Luminescent Threads, Connections to Octavia Butler. And I actually, I have another thing that is in a book out. Um, Jonathan Strahan's The Best Science Fiction and Fantasy of the Year, Volume 12. So you can find my short story, The Fairy Tree, in there, and an essay on Octavia Butler in the Octavia Butler book. And there will be more later. I'm excited. I am always going to say, every time I hear about these awards, I'm in fascination. And now you just do the Hugo out there. I'm like, <sighs> I bow before thee. Mo- moving on. Nominated. On to our soon to learn the master's <laughs> techniques of creative writing. I joke, but I don't joke. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chanel Etienne. I am a going to be a graduate student in an MFA program. Yay! Uh, starting soon. I write speculative fiction and some literary fiction when I'm feeling crabby. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I dance, I write, I witch things up. This is what my life is. Excellent. I like witch things up. Yeah. <laughs> and also with us is our Monet, our Picasso, our Michelangelo of the illustrations. I'll take and Michelangelo. Talbot. I'm not quite a Monet. He, his brain worked in ways the mind does not. Um, <laughs> that too. Oh. And bad eyesight. Impressionist burn. <laughs> uh, my name is Jennifer Stolzer. I'm a children's book author and illustrator. Uh, I'm working on a lot of projects right now. New stuff coming out for the Threadcaster Universe, which is uh, a fantasy novel for young adults. New stuff coming out for kids. A uh, new dog park book that's picture book. You can find the first one on Amazon. And I'm going to launch, by the end of this year, a chapter book series in the style of children adventure novels. So (laughs) I'm calling them the Your Life as Blank series. We'll see if that's subject to change, but I've started working on them already, and they're awful fun. Let's not be modest now. What list are you on? Very recently. Yes, yes. seriously. Yes. I was recently voted by local St. Louisans, readers of Post-Dispatch, as one of the top five Children's authors in the St. Louis area. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. Very yeah, exciting. Totally amazing. <laughs> Quite unexpected, but a great honor. Yes. Also with me is my compet my competitor. No. Your competitor. <laughs> that too. And she she's actually in competition of getting the first draft done before me. And right now, with us going into Gateway Con, she's really got a good chance of getting way ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, yes. on the other hand, I'm Melanie Lucas, and actually, uh, hmm, at least this week, he ha- he's uh, keeping up with me, because I've been doing terrible about game writing this week. Um, but. I, we, I really do want you two to keep us updated on your competition. I may be making you a prize. <laughs> okay. Oh, that'd so, be cool. And then, right now, the competition will be both of us doing terrible. <laughs> no progress. Yeah. But Monday, I'm hoping to have progress. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Y'all better we'll finish see. by August third, if not, I won't be August. Okay. Well, well yeah, then. you'll beat both of us. <laughs> yes. yes. Also with us is I'm Dante Carlisle. I write criminal fiction, not crime fiction. For those of you that don't know the distinction, that means that uh, I do not write from the viewpoint of a police officer. I write from the viewpoint of the criminals. I have three novels out on Amazon right now, and about to scrap the one that I'm 36 chapters into right now. Scrap it? Why are you scrapping it? It's about to go into the graveyard. Oh, wow. This is the second time that I have actually...
actually, I've already completed one draft of it, and then I scrap it, <laughs> and then I have completed a second draft, and then I scrap it, and now we're on number three, and I might just have to say this is not a book that I'm going to write. <laughs> and I don't wow, feel so I'm bad fine. anymore. Oh, yeah. But he's just not fine. Yeah. yeah. And also with us today is the Sky Pirate Captain whatever of Steampunk. Uh, I'll take it. Yes, I'm Brad R. Cook. I am the author of the Iron Chronicles, the Ardraining Adventures, and Tales of the Blade will be coming out later this year uh, in its completion. Uh, you can check out the first few of them for free online. Uh, however, I uh, want to throw out to everybody who's listening, if you don't have the Iron Chronicles, there is now the Iron Chronicles True G Pack. You can get it on my website. Uh, for 36 bucks, you get the three books and the two prints and bookmarks, and a handmade pin, and a bunch of other stuff. Check it out. It's at bradarkrook.com. Excellent. And also, is our fantasy writer determined to outdo, G- outdo Martin? No, I'm just joking. I know you're not, that would be lovely, but... He's fighting on the number of words. Yes. Ryan? I am Ryan P. Freeman. I write fantasy. Uh, you know what? And I don't want to be a Martin or a Tolkien or a Lewis. I want to be a Ryan. So, you know what? That's, that's, that's what I do. I... I I have uh, several books already, uh, uh, Rain Spell, uh, The Great Isle Tale, and uh, The Trombos and Most. Um, and uh, of course, I always have new novels in the mix. And uh, I also head up uh, uh, author services. And I'm also the uh, founder of the Horizon Club. Yes, you are. And um, for the audience, real fast, before we get diving into this, I do have two quick announcements. Number one. Last year we attempted this without much luck. This year it's going to happen. You can register to attend Right Pack Radio Live. Uh, that will be recorded live in front of a live audience plus online on June 17th. Watch our Right Pack Radio page on Facebook or our Twitter account or winding trails of both of those as well. And you will see the tweets and announcements coming out. In fact, they've already been coming out for you by now. Online seating, that sounds weird to say, but online seating is limited limited to 100 people. However, if you want to physically come, you can. Come to Gateway Con. Gateway Con's convention and conference, which will be June 15th through 17th in St. Louis. Writers Conference, free book fair. Writer Retreat, and on Sunday, we will be doing the Write Pack recording. So stay tuned. Oh, and the topic of that is, short version, it's not the actual name of it, but basically it's describing your book in a nutshell, how to do that. All right. The second announcement before we get diving in is, this is, well, it's not really part one of a conversation. It is part one. In a few weeks, we are going to have some guest speakers, our guest panelists on this show, that are, how should I say, experts in promotion and sales and so forth. So they are Bob Baker and LaShonda Hoffman. We will have them coming on board and sharing information on promotion. And that's actually going to be a two-part episode. That will be airing, a, because of Gay Week Con Live, I now have my... Um, calendar completely screwed up exactly to know when that will air, but it will be airing um, sometime probably late June to early July. Just watch for it. It will be announced. Um, with that, today we're going, yes, I totally, because she told me to make her last this time. I, I, and he made me last and then some. And then some. Okay. I was like, <laughs> I, was no, I, thought, I was curious, and then I was like, no, Kathleen, you have ADD, you forget things all the time. She <laughs> yeah. probably just said her name already. And actually, you just said exactly why I passed, called ADD. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say a word or two about independent bookstores. Lonely Planet just very recently had a blog on about the 11... Independent bookstores in the United States that are worth traveling to visit. Wow. And they are bookstores from Miami, San Diego, Las Vegas, Portland, Oregon, Boston, New York. And from St. Louis is our very own Left Bank Books. Woo! And I am proud to say that my books 
Jack the Ripper in St. Louis and Mayhem in Buffalo Bills Wild West are there. So go and buy some from a great destination bookstore. But beyond that, they have been wonderful to Sisters in Crime. And so I want to give a shout out to Left Bank Books, to you, Corey and Shane. Thank you so much. Yay. And so while I'm at it, I want to also thank Holland Saltzman over at Novel Neighbor Bookstore in Webster, who has also been wonderful to Sisters in Crime. And I know everybody from your group, uh-huh. David, would to thank a very special person, too. Do you want to go ahead? Emily, right? Emily, Emily Hall. Right? Yes. Emily Hall from Main Street Books in St. Charles. Who's a great friend to everybody. And, and she'll be our... And she's going to be... She'll be uh, handling Gateway the Cup. book sales at Gateway Cup. Yep. Which is another big thank you to her. Yes. Absolutely. These are absolutely wonderful bookstores and wonderful people, so go and visit them. And buy books. So and it's, it's a, uh, it doesn't apply to airing, but recording date last weekend was uh, independent, independent bookstore day. Yep. So a good time to bring it up. Oh, good. Yep. And just to mention, go ahead, since we mentioned GatewayCon, for more information well, about GatewayCon, visit www.stlwritersguild.org. So you can click GatewayCon. Go ahead. What about people who are like, I don't want to go to an independent bookstore. I'm not sure if they'll have what I want. Can they, can they order something for you if you call ahead? Oh, sure. absolutely. And just go in and talk to the people. They're just so nice. I mean, it's, they really want to get It's just like you. any other bookstore, only this one isn't owned by a joint corporation. It's owned by usually a family. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the biggest thing I've found when I go into places like, um, like Main Street Books is that it's a brand new, fresh uh, 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 gathering of, of books. Uh, I like to challenge myself to read something new, and it's a whole gallery full of stuff that I'm not necessarily going to find in a Barnes and Noble, um, and that's great. Now let me pause us here for a second before we get totally talking about bookstores, which is a part of this topic. So, <laughs> which is fantastic. And I've already got Jen ready to jump on. Let me say that today's topic is discussing that age-old myth out there. <laughs> That, hey, I'm a writer, I shouldn't have to sell my books. That's up to the agent, to the publisher, etc. Today, uh, yeah, I wish that was the case. We're going to talk about the different ways to publish, why it is, why it falls to us to, not to publish, to sell, and why it falls to us to do that. Jen, go ahead with the bookstores. Yeah, bookstores, since we're talking about selling your books, uh, if you're an independent publisher, like me, where you just publish your own book, uh, I have a, I hopefully have a book coming out from a publisher soon, and several that I've worked on that will hopefully come out with publishers, but my books, Threadcaster and Dog Park, are independently published through CreateSpace, which means that I cannot, uh, without great difficulty, get into a Barnes & Noble or a Walmart, right. but independent bookstores not only will shelve my books for me for a consignment fee, but also are an excellent place to do a book signing and launch a book, which is a fantastic way to hand sell and to gain a, increase awareness of your titles and you as a writer and gain fans. Tell us what you mean by consignment. Consignment is when you split the, the sale of the book between you and the establishment that is selling it. So everyone gets a cut of it. Uh, usually it's 60-40 to 20-80, depending on where you go. 60-40 is a little bit more common. And uh, that means that they get 40% of the sticker price and you get 60% of the sticker price. And if you're going through Create Space, uh, that usually results in you getting about a dollar a book, which is industry standard, so it works out. They, they price it so that you can then consign it somewhere. If you, if you sell it at the sticker price that it is offered on Amazon. Do you have a contract then? Yes. I've, signed, I've consigned with multiple places around St. Louis, and they all have their own contracts that they write up in-house, pretty much just stating what we agree to split it with and how long they agree to have the copies of the book. Um, Main Street Books specifically likes to keep three on hand most of the time, so it, tell, it says how many copies of the book they're taking initially, and... That they have, or, you know, it's like, we'll keep it for a minimum of, I don't remember what their minimum is, but let's say a minimum of three months. You check back in, see how your sales went, if they need more copies, if they're like, thank you very much, we're going to 
not have our contract anymore. I've had stores <laughs> get rid of get rid of is a mean way of saying uh, release the books back to me because I, I wasn't unsold. reaching. Yeah, that I wasn't reaching the market that uh, they hoped I would in their store. Uh, most of those were like Kirkwood, downtown Kirkwood, like novelty stores. So I'm like, you want my picture book? And they're like, yeah, we'll give your picture book a try. But the picture book traffic wasn't in this novelty store, so they said, here's your copies back. Thanks yeah. very much. No harm done. So, so contracts. It's not, it's not just book bookstores, but it can be where anything that takes consignment. It never hurts to ask if if people have consignment open. Uh, novelty stores, uh, a lot of independently owned stores are willing to take a chance on consignment. Uh, a lot of big stores, you know, like I said, you can't get into Barnes & Noble. That's because Barnes & Noble has a corporate entity in the sky that says yes or no to something like that. You have to get into the international catalog in order to be in a Barnes & Noble store. But a small store? Uh, here, here's an anecdote. I wish I could tell you her name, but I read about it online. There was a woman who found out that she did her best writing in a tire repair store. Like, she went in for tires, and she sat in the corner in their waiting room and got, like, thousands of words written. So she started volunteering to take other people's cars to the tire store so that she could sit in the tire store and write a book. And when they realized that she was coming in so often... They said, you know, you don't need to bring your car in. You can just come if you want. <laughs> and they, like, reserved a little seat in the corner for her. They made her coffee. Awesome. And when she finished her book, everyone there was invested, and they sold it on the counter for a while. Yeah. What? That's fabulous. So it was, it's, it, you never know what opportunity is going to present itself. You just ask and see. Uh, but an uh, independent bookstore usually will take a consignment agreement as long as it's, as your book is one that fits in their stacks already, you know. So... Always ask. You never know where opportunity will present itself. And that's a great place for an independently produced person mm. to begin. And please Google that story so you can find out who that woman <laughs> was and who the tire store is. <laughs> Excellent. We've got a total of three dovetails. We're going to go Ryan, Kathleen, myself. Are you not dovetail? Mine's new. Okay, yours is new. So it's going to go Ryan and then me, then, then Kathleen. So Ryan. Okay, well, you know, right along the lines with what Jan is saying, um, it is uh, one of the things I found because um, I love working with um, any bookstores, any coffee shops, anywhere I think somebody could buy my book that's kind of fits my my niche of uh, people who read my stuff. Is you're going in there not just to get a contract signed from them so they sell your books. You're going in there to make a little relationship. When you when I go down to Main Street Books, Emily gives me a hug and, and asks how I'm doing. And really, um, uh, not only is that nice as a human being, but also she's she's professionally more likely to look after me um, if we actually know each other. Versus if it's just oh hey, I have a book, you sign this science paper. Um, the places where I have a real real working relationship with the person that owns the place or who's regularly behind. Um, means that I get better. I get a better placement in the store. Uh, it means that they're they're more likely to contact me if they need more book. Uh, they're more likely to help help push my books when I'm not there. Um, what you're really doing is creating your own distribution network. Um, and as 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 uh, if you are a indie author like I am, um, you have to do that. You don't just get one because you are a book. Like I wish you did, but you don't. Um, so by slowly thinking about, okay, where do I go on a regular basis for people who want to buy a book? Where, where do I know that people who read my book would be happy? Go there. Make friends. Uh, uh, think about where you go already. Make friends. Um, if you do book tours, make friends. Uh, libraries, schools, uh, coffee shops, I don't know, bars, um, uh, bookstores, whatever. Uh, you are building your network, and your network will work for you once you get out the door. Excellent. Not contradicting me. Oh, you yelled out today. I'll get on the cup you in a moment. Um, not contradicting anything at all before of what well, well, Ryan just said. You know, make friends with them, and you're able to get better in there. But also be completely, totally professional. Um, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, um, but I do know of one writer who had an issue with somebody who I know is very friendly to independent authors to get their books in there for consignment, and they had a problem, and while I was 
looking at their post on this, I could read between the lines go, yeah, I know what the problem was. You were a jerk. Mm-hmm. And it, it, the bookstore owners, the independent bookstore owners, are entrepreneurs, just like you are. Even if you are traditionally published, you're an entrepreneur. You, you got to think like that. Um, you've got to be able to hold a professional relationship with any place that holds it, with any place that you're trying to sell your book. With bookstores especially because... Yeah, just like if you look online, how many books are out there right now? How many thousands, millions of various books are out there just in your genre? And that many more coming out every day. Exactly that. And you're, you're, they, they don't want to treat you like a number, but they do have alternatives to you. <laughs> don't get me wrong. So be aware of that. Um, my Not quest- the only one. Yeah, my question uh, that I kind of want to go to. And I kind of want to raise this, I kind of want to bring this up anyway. It's still staying on bookstores and consignments. If you are a um, house published author, I, aka traditional published, coming out from one of the big names or even a small press, do you need to, fo- actually I know that's a two-pronged question, do you need to worry about consignment? Um, and to the audience, before I let the right pack begin to answer that question, I'm going to mention to you, just because you're a traditional uh, a traditional author, traditionally published author, does not mean that just because your book is in a bookstore already that you don't need to do something to get your words out. Um, there was a case, I'm going to go ahead and throw Barnes & Noble under the bus, so I do like Barnes & Noble. Um, this was... 2011, September or October, um, the Barnes & Noble bookstore I'm going to talk about is now closed. It was one was they closed a couple years ago. Um, we had mystery, thriller, writer, and legend John Lutz come and talk to a group of people. John Lutz, if you don't know him, go, go Google him, L-U-T-Z. He is so many, so many times published, it's not even funny. Yeah, and I'm not kidding you. He has been made, he's been put into the legends of the Hall of Fame, if you will. Um, we had had Bouchercon, which is a big suspense and mystery writers and fan convention here in St. Louis, September 2011. This event I'm talking about that John Lewis came to, to Barnes & Noble occurred Within a week or two after that. So you got the big convention that happens in St. Louis. We have 30 some odd people in the room waiting to talk to John Lux. Everything had been arranged with Barnes and Noble. Guess how many books they had to sell? Had on hand to sell of John Lux's books. Drum roll please. Answer is three. Um, John was not happy. No. In the slightest. The customers would have been happy either. No, the customers were not happy either. Um, so, goes to the question is, do, do traditional pu- traditionally published authors, big house, small house, have to worry about consignments? And Brad, I know you can hit on the small ones, small house. I'm just throwing this open to everybody. Starting with Brad? I'll, I'll start with you. I didn't see your okay. hand, but I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am traditionally published by two different small publishers. Uh-huh. Well, no, one is small, one is not small. The one that I have now is not small. But at any rate, certainly I think that you do because, you know, it's the ordinary person who comes in and looks at the bookshelf is going to, in any bookstore or library, whatever, is going to go to whatever their comfort zone is. They're going to go to what they like, whether it's science fiction, fantasy, mystery, and they're going to browse around in there until they find something they think they like. If you are going to sell your own stuff, and everybody has to do that now, because publishers are not going to send you on a big around-the-world tour or even around-the-neighborhood tour. (laughs) They don't have money for anybody except the J.K. Rawlings of the world and the Stephen Kings. Mm -hmm. So you need to do it yourself. And you need to look for venues, perhaps, that are not terribly ordinary. I'll give you an example of my own. Since mine is historical fiction set in St. Louis, Jack the Ripper in St. Louis, I 
am a member of the Damon Neal House, which is an historical home, which is often open for tours and they have big Aunt festivals. <laughs> 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 and uh, so I have been for some time doing little programs there for them and uh, developed, as you were talking about, a friendship there. And so they were certainly willing to sign, uh, to have me sign there and even bought books. I did not have to do this on consignment. They bought the books from the publisher and mm-hmm. kept them in their gift shop. And so that is the kind of thing that you need to do if you are going to get around and get books in places where people who are interested in what you're interested in, in this case, St. Louis history, are going to find them readily. Because they're going to be sitting on the main shelf right there in front of people so that they look at it before they buy whatever they went to the gift shop to buy in the first place. <laughs> so that is my suggestion, that you try to find places which are a bit out of the ordinary, but which will have your books right up front. Ryan, I know you had your hand up. Is that connection. I still got Dante as a dovetail. And, of course, we got Kathleen Wayne to change subjects. So, um, Brian... Are you dovetailing to Fedora or dovetailing into the general? Um, I was going to dovetail with the Fedora. Okay. Um, and Dante, some questions? Um, I'm actually still dovetailing off of what you said earlier, but it fits in with what you said okay. as well. Then I will let, uh, let you go first, yeah. Dante, give way longer than uh, Ryan. Essentially, that. it's just, I, I just wanted to say, I, I love that idea, like you said, you know, with the, the historic house and everything else, putting it there. And as Ryan said, you know, everywhere you go, you meet people. And as Jennifer actually said earlier, that same thing was that tire shop. She did really well there, and the people at the tire shop posted her book. I actually just had the same thing happen in my my pool hall when I just published my new book, like four four or five months ago now. Five months ago, I everyone in the pool hall knew because I've talked to them. Like, oh yeah, you know, I got to go home and write. I can't play anymore. <clears throat> and so the instant that I published my book, the pool hall actually bought like the first 20 copies wow. and sold it out of there. Wow. So they were like, awesome. oh, yeah, you know, one of our regular pool players here does this. So, I mean, it really does work. It helps that you, you tell everyone er- everywhere you go. Because that's, that's one of the worst things to have happen is when you're out in public and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I just published so-and-so book or whatever. And one of your close friends looks at you and they're like, I didn't even know that you wrote. It's like you have to let those people know about it. You have to be able to market yourself. Otherwise, no one else is going to do it for you. Yep. Ryan and then Fedora. Okay, so it is right along with us, too. Um, I'm on a, a, a social media site uh, uh, called Enter. And uh, a couple days ago, someone had a post on there about how they have one of the original versions of uh, Aragon uh, back when it was in um, because they were driving by through Montana, and where the author lives, and uh, uh, they were stopped at the gas station, and they picked it up for something to read. Um, they, you know, it, yes, his parents are involved in, in the publishing industry, so you know what? Yeah, but um, large things are built with, with, with small steps, you know? Uh, the, the plain and simple fact is you, you never know uh, who is going to pick up your book, but they can only pick it up at the top of it, and not just online. Um, I I feel like it's really kind of like like the artisan comeback, like it's a little like a revival of booksellers to, to be able to turn books out in, in the most unlikely places to be picked up. Um, heck, I mean, the only reason I feel like I really got into fantasy uh, and I blog about this was because we had to wait in line in the library go in for computer class in the next room. And I've always been short. So the shelf that's at my high level, which isn't at anybody else's, was <laughs> fantasy. And so I stare at these books every day. It's like, you know what? Maybe I'll read one. And I did. And I read another and another and another. You know, you, you never know who's going to pick up your book. And they can only do it if you get it out in places. And, and, and you're not going to think too hard. Just where do you like to go? Where do people who, who you think would read your books like to go? Go talk to people, you know, or heck, when you're writing, go go write out in your own community and, and make friends with wherever you're at because um, people are going to want to read your stuff. 
I'm going to go with Fedora, Dante. I still haven't forgotten Kathleen yet. Uh, Brad, have you got your hand up? I have not seen it. If you have. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Then you'll be after Dante, and then we'll go to Kathleen. Hopefully. Fedora? I'm going to tell you a deep, dark secret that I learned from Elaine Veets. I was on a panel with her once, and uh, she gave out this tip to the people in the room. So you're going to get a wonderful tip from a great St. Louis writer who writes historical, uh, historical, not historical, hysterical mysteries. <laughs> the dead. <laughs> the the dead dead yeah. jobs. Yes. They're so funny. At any rate, her suggestion, was, and she does this, was to have business cards. Not maybe the business cards like other businesses have, but with your book cover on one side and information to reach your website on the other. And that is why I hand out to people and I place some of these cards in the train station mm -hmm. in my hometown. And, you know, I put them out here, there, and yon, and they're kind of fun to do. I do my own, though I probably ought to go to Vista Fruit or something. But at any rate, that is a good idea. And uh, Joanna Sland, who also has a number of books out, does kind of the same thing, but she has a more extensive one. Hers are, are bookmarks, and she has a lot of copy on it in addition to just her website. I'm sorry, I'm going to cut in line. I need to share this very quickly, and I'm sorry, going over to Dante, then over to Brad. Um, talking about you put your books, books in bookstore, or the translation, so forth. The business so, card. Not yeah. Oh, but, okay. Well, this friend of mine <laughs> left his copy of his own book on on a chair in an airplane. And the stewardess finds it. It's actually, he left it, I think, fell on the ground or something. I don't remember the exact details. And nobody's claiming it. And she picks up a book and says, hey, we found this book. It's been lost and found. If anybody wants it, please claim it. Uh, there's this book here called The Southern Cross by, reads off the title, author's <laughs> name, about blah, 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 blah. blah who's this, I mean, free publicity, <laughs> right off the bat. And it was 200 plus Captivated audience. Okay, Dante, Brad. <laughs> um, I, I was actually going to answer your question. The, the question that you asked uh -huh. about, you know, if you're traditionally published, you still have to worry about it. Absolutely. Obviously, yes. Obviously, I still say yes. Um, just because, as you pointed out, in today's market, there are so many things being published that it's almost unreal. And it's, it's, but what I have to say is, as far as our topic goes, I don't think that it's always been a myth. I think, you know, if you were published 50 or 60 years ago, you probably didn't have to do as much work marketing it. That's why it's considered to be a myth now, is because we're, we're still, we know about the Hemingways and everyone else that, you know, when they were published, there were very few people actually being published on that large of a scale. So it's, I don't think it's so much a myth, it's just, it's a newfound deal with the internet. It's the new truth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't always the truth, but now it is the truth. And if you if you try to stick with that, then that's about how far your books are going to go. Okay, Brad, what's your thoughts and statements? Yeah, so Fedora, first I have to throw out that I too actually have the business card with the uh, book cover on the back and the, my info on the front and the bookmark too, with the, with the copy and uh, the uh, book cover on it. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, the that, that whole marketing technique. You guys have thrown out a great one in uh, terms of uh, how to market thyself, uh, which is always good, especially to do it in local ways. Uh, and, you know, we've been talking about it, yeah, even Stephen King or Neil Gaiman uh, has to keep up their readership. And when I say that, I mean a connection with their readers. Uh, and this is what I wanted to throw out, which is the new one for today. Uh, so if you try to start a blog or any of that kind of fun stuff recently and you've been reading up on all of that, they all say don't do it because the new one is to create community. Uh, and that's what everyone on, uh, you know, the internet is trying to do. So instead of having, uh, like an email chain list or something like that, which you should totally do and, you know, because these are all tried and true not to do it. But, uh, the whole new one is to create a community amongst your readership and the people who would be involved with your topic. So if you are a mystery writer or if you are a romance writer or whatever, you create 
a community of people around this who all have like minds and like interests and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's a way of not just create, you know, hitting everybody over with the buy my book message and giving something more to everyone uh, and then kind of gathering everyone together. And that's partly in the way that we work in society. We're becoming more uh, social, uh, both offline and online. Um, so it's a way, because you'll get meetups out of these things. You'll get all kinds of crazy stuff. And it was so, it's this podcast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's almost like we're living the dream right now. Uh, yeah. So these are all definitely things you can do. But I will throw out... Um, in turn, we've done this on the, we've done episodes two in the history of, uh, marketing and authors and everything like that. The whole point is to get your book where people, readers, are going to pick <laughs> their next book. That used to be the newspaper. So getting your book reviewed in the newspaper used to be the thing. You did that. That was your marketing strategy. That's all you had to do. But we're not like that anymore. We don't get our news from one place. We get our news from a thousand places, which means as authors, we have to pick from those thousand places which are the best places for our book and to push our books. And as we've been talking about, this is done through connections and knowing people and meeting people and being nice and being professional and understanding what your book's about and all of that good stuff that goes into marketing a book. But, you know, these are all things that we have to do. If you notice Neil Gaiman or Stephen, King, the way that they craft, uh, most of them just kind of keep putting out their content, uh, and they're just like, hey, I'm me, and people follow them, uh, and that's really awesome, but you'll notice a bunch of other authors who are growing, uh, being an active community, and going back and forth with your readers, and not just uh, preaching, but interacting, and having a back and forth. If you really want to follow this, and I, I highly don't recommend doing this, but it, it is it is the best. Follow pop stars and what they do. Uh, and, you know, the, the Taylor Swift types of the world, because they're constantly dropping little things to their fans. They constantly have all these things that wrap up with their fans. It's an interaction. It's a back and forth. And in that, you become something more than just an author that they read, but an iconic part of their life. Okay, so now and then I'm going to go with Kathleen. She's the brain forever today. Okay, go ahead, Kathleen. Go first. Oh, okay. continue because I do have some questions for things that uh, people like Jen brought up earlier about how to go about doing the marketing. Um, I want to bring it back to why it's necessary in the first place. Um, because I'm the kind of person that like, if I don't think it applies to me, like I'll listen, uh -huh. but it's nice. It's a nice theory. I won't necessarily go out and try it myself, especially because I'm kind of a shrinking violet when it comes to marketing. Like I haven't told all of my family yet that I have a short story in a book. Like, when I got my novella published in 2011, I don't know that I told some of them even the title of the book. Like, and that's my family. Those are the people that are supposed to be, like, the first people in line to buy your stuff. So, I mean, like, what about for our listeners who don't necessarily think this applies to them, who don't have something to hand sell right now? Just why is it relevant for them? Why is it relevant for everyone to know how to do this? Well, first of all, I'm going to say this. Um... My family would not be the first ones I'd tell anyway. It would be my chosen family, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. my friends, who I hold really close, um, as far as letting them know what I do. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it down dollars and cents aspect. Complete business, and Brad, you can, and everybody can contradict me, but if what you're doing, if all you're doing is writing for yourself or doing it as a hobby, okay, Really, you don't need to do anything we're talking about because you have no intention of it going anywhere or doing anything. If, however, you want to live the dream of being able to make money, aka try to live off of it, nevertheless, try to have it as a supplement to your income or whatever, it all comes down to dollars and cents. Um, traditional published authors, or not authors, traditionally publishers, Traditional published agents and all that look to see how either your last book did, if it's out in the bookstores, if you are already traditionally published, or if you are self published, as my understanding is, they look to see how your self publishing did. Mm -hmm. 
for you to get the numbers that might interest them, you have to be out there pushing your book. And if you're not pushing your book or your art, your work, then all you're going to do is maybe be found someday after you're dead and somebody, <laughs> somebody realizes who you are. I mean, point blank. That's Brad, right please contradict, him, contradict me if you wish. And then, oh, no, I'm not contradicting you at all because you're pretty much right on there. So uh, The only thing I would say is that uh, it, it is... So the reason why you would publish or publicize yourself is there are millions of authors out there. There are millions of books, and you have to stand out from them if you want to get purchased. Uh, yes, the book can stand on its own, uh, and in some places the book will stand on its own, but uh, the author is also the biggest uh, cheerleader and salesman for the book. So a book that has an author behind it will go a thousand times further than a book that stands alone with no one behind it. So that would be first off, but really what it boils down to, as David said, is money. Um, in order to make money, and this does not matter how you are published in any way, shape, or form, uh, you need to sell thousands of copies of your book. Uh, in order to do that, you need to get thousands of people to buy your book. In order to get thousands of people to buy your book, you're going to have to get in front of tens of thousands of people because a bunch of them are going to be like, nah, I'm not into that, or eh, I'm not buying that today. But out of every, say, 10 people that you talk to, one of them is going to buy your book. And if that's cool, then if you talk to 10,000 people, 1,000 people are going to buy your book. So it's, it's numbers. It's all of that kind of stuff. And it does mean something because it really is about how many people can see your cover because that means how many people will buy your book. Excellent. Okay, next up will be Ryan, then Fedora, then Chanel, then Dante. Okay, well, the, the one, one little I got to off all that is also, um, I was going to say, time <laughs> place. Okay, well, I'll uh, that's you. okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to remember. Uh, Oh, I know what this is. Well, well, why, why are you writing if you're just going to be writing for them? And, and, and every, every author has their own answers to those questions, so that's all we need that. But, um, the, the other the other thing I was going to throw out with marketing uh, yourself um, is, uh, for example, uh, recently I was at the Illinois, uh, Illinois uh, Real Estate Convention. Uh, my day job is training to be licensed in Illinois, so houses. I don't know why, but they are. And, um, uh, so anyways, it's really funny because it's in the same place as Archon is. Uh, and so it was, it was just bizarre being in there and not being Archon. And so I was like, Archon? Like, there's, there's speakers and there's, there's sellers and everything. It's just a different kind of cosplay, you know? Um, authors tend to have kind of a look to them, I think anyways. Um, and I really believe that you need to find ways to help stand out. Um, otherwise you're going to blend in, just like your book might blend in. And I think a really easy, simple way to do that uh, is with a uh, sensory detail. Um, for example, uh, my author cards, I have an extra stick. So every time, every time, I've seen this again and again and again and again, when someone picks up my author card, they do a double take because it, it feels thicker than they actually look at it. Um, same thing goes with, with your cover. So, you know, uh, how you dress, how you present yourself, um, like when I'm hand selling, because I love hand selling. I was telling somebody the other day, when do you get to, uh, to, uh, dress up in armor, yell at people in the mall, and make money? It's great. Um, have something that makes you you, that helps you stand out. Uh, have something that helps with your, your, your sensory detail pick up on, uh, whether it's an extra thick business card, whether it's armor, whether it's, it's, it's something that you're doing, someone that you're presenting yourself or your book um, that stands out. And, and like I said, a good way to do that is with your senses. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in between the door just to say point blank. Three examples. Um, Brad tends to, when I've seen him at various signings that he's doing where he's hand selling, he's dressed up in a kind of a steampunk outfit. Which is a fabulous one. I love that. Yep. Sorry, don't. Fedora, I've seen dress up from time to time either with wearing a fedora or oh, 
Oh, it's or a scene that you get pictures of you doing Victorian age dress. And then um, Ryan, I have seen constantly in chainmail and a kilt. Yes. So as examples. Yes. Um, okay, fedora. Well, what uh, there is a term for what Ryan is talking about, and David, and it is a platform. Okay. And certainly, if you are writing a query, one thing you need to mention. If you have one, and if you don't have one, get one, is your platform. And these people are talking about steampunk and dressing up like steampunk and going out in the public and doing performances. And I do much the same thing in uh, 1800 style and have speeches that I do as historical characters. That is developing a platform and a trademark as well. Mine is a fedora hat. Something to set you apart from the crowd. So develop a platform. But there's one other thing I wanted to say. Both David and Brad were talking about money. Well, tisk tisk tisk. It's not all about money. I don't think anyone goes into writing with a serious belief that he or she is going to make a grand fortune. If you do, I suggest you go somewhere else and do something oh, else. I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. What we begin writing for, I think, is for our own sakes, our own passion. It is what we love, and that's why we want to reach other people with it. And that's why we want to put our books in other people's hands. But that a book is that is advertised we have to will sell more than a book that is not. <laughs> yes. I'm not saying not advertised. I'm saying because you're passionate, you want to sell your books. It's not a chore. It's not something that's terrible. It's something that can be a great deal of fun. Okay, Chanel, you're next. Okay, so. answer, answer, answer everything previous because I'm taking this all day. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, actually, I just wanted to say something about, or I wanted to kind of had, I kind of had a question for the group. Was one of the things that you said, you know, if you're looking for a traditional publisher and you've done really well in indie, uh -huh. then you're nine thousand times more likely to get that traditional publisher. Like they ask, you know, what's your platform? How many readers have you reached? What kind of you know, what kind of numbers are you looking at on social media? One of my biggest questions and one of the curiosities that I've had are always, you know, if you're doing that well in promoting your own stuff and selling everything else, why why go looking for the traditional publisher? Especially with how little the traditional publishers nowadays actually really aid their writers with anything beyond, you know, in-house editing, professional graphic design on the covers, and that sort of thing. What exactly do they offer now that if you're putting in the hours a day to advertise and market your book yourself, why, why is that still such a big dream for so many people? I'm holding my horses on that answer. Um, once it be the Brad or Fedora one, jump in first. Go for Fedora. Well, I would say that uh, it depends on how career-oriented you are. If all you want to do is make some money, then probably you're better off just to do your independent stuff, sell your own books. You take the, uh, almost all of the money for it, and there you are. But if you're looking to create a career and develop uh, associations with people who are in the industry, make them go to... Uh, contests, get contests, join the multi-publishers association. There are benchmarks that you have to meet before you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're not ever going to be an industry insider oh, or know yeah. any if you, uh, if you stay put in that niche. Okay. So there are some advantages to it. They may not be the advantages you're looking for. Though. Exactly. And that's, I mean, it's going to be a different answer for everyone. But Brett? I would just throw out that, you know, it's about amplification. So uh, Amanda Hawking or uh, Hugh Howery or one of those people who can easily pull down a million bucks uh, a year writing, um, you know, or a million in sales on a book. Uh, I don't remember which it was. But um, the reason they have now moved on to traditionally published uh, and won, uh, you know, they're going to offer up you a contract as the you know big five knows, hey, you can sell a book. Uh, and that people really like reading your stuff. So partly it's they're getting offers and who's not going to take these offers. But really it's about amplification. If you want to be in Walmart 
Do you want to be in every Barnes and Noble? Do you want to be in every Hudson News and all of those kinds of places? Because it is difficult to get into some of those places, especially if you're not part of the Big Five, because that's where those places only go to. Uh, If you look at, like, uh, I can't remember what was the latest biography. It was printed, if they printed 850,000 copies for the initial sales run. I mean, that's just never going to happen in any other universe than in the big five top tier 1% or whatever you want to call it of the publishing world. If that's your goal and you've got the skill set and everything else, go for it. The movie deals, you know, foreign rights, all of those kinds of things start rolling in. Um, a lot of that's not necessarily handled by your publisher, it's handled by agents and stuff, but it's still part of all of that universe. So it's really just about amplification. Uh, and it is, you know, you know, they have the biggest bullhorn and to the most readers. So, there you go. I like that answer. So now I'm going to just jump over to you with your question and then we'll so switch our tracks. I do have, if you're not going to cover it, I want to cover something too. Cool. Okay. So here's my question. In terms of like us, we bitty bitty the authors, um, in terms of bank for your book, uh-huh. Like, okay, you've got, you, you've suddenly got this book baby here, and it's screaming in your arms. <laughs> so beautiful, Mama. Okay, go ahead. Um, what is the very first thing you need to look into, the thing, like, most bang for your buck for getting yourself out there? <laughs> okay, Brad, you're I first. I'm going to start with Fedora, and I'll come this way. Okay, Fedora, then Brad, then Jen. Yeah. You need to you need to have some place to direct traffic, some place that you're going to change perhaps very frequently. Get a website. Yeah. Step one. Correct. And before you're published, get a website. Yeah. Uh. yeah. Okay. Yes, I I highly agree with what Fedora just said. But to kind of answer her question as to what is the holy grail of what you want, um, so you can do the things like Kirkus reviews and stuff if you wish. Those those are very good. Uh, but the one that right now kind of is the one everyone's kind of clamoring for is, uh, oh, crikey. I want to say it's Book Baby or is it? Book Bob. Book Bob. Bob. Book Bob. That's it. Thank you. I apologize. Um, yes. So that is a service that, you know, gives away books every month and advertises to tons and tons of readers. Uh, and then the other one that I would throw up is Goodreads because that is still the number one place that readers go on the internet. Um, so these are the places you want to feature your book and be featured. Um, if you're a kid's author, your holy grail is to get into the scholastic book sales. So, you know, it, it's, it's each genre, I guess, has its own, but basically what you really want is that super awesome review though. Just the other day, they were talking about how nobody reads worms anyway, so uh, go fig. But yeah, it, it, you're trying to get it into the best uh, place that readers are at and book bug and book bug, that's it. And uh, the other one. And Amazon. Amazon still, yeah. Oh yeah, you got well, yes, obviously on Amazon too. I'm not meaning anywhere to sell it, I'm meaning anywhere to push it and advertise it. Sure. I think your, uh, your key question was Facebook will always be free yes. for advertisements. Free is a good good amount of money that anyone can afford. <laughs> so, I love free. So free is great, and there are free places to get websites as well, like Blogspot and WordPress and places like that. There, uh, you have to pay for a domain if you want a fancy domain. Like I'm at jennifersolzer.com. I pay for that domain, but, but it's not very much. How much is it? It's like it's um, like fifteen dollars a year. Yeah, if you're well fortunate known. enough to have a distinctive name that no one else is. Oh, definitely. But That's you know, name and I recommend doing this because I just had my dot com jacked for me and it pissed me off. So. There you go. Uh, but doing, uh, doing, you know, setting up a Twitter, you can set up as many Twitters as you want, uh, as many email accounts as you want for free, as many blog spots, tumblers as you want for free, as many Instagrams and uh, Snapchats. Facebook groups, and all of these things, find something that you enjoy, that you can update, that you can 
fill with content that you can make a house in and go make a house in it and right now. And real quick, uh, just to interject before uh, Chanel goes next, and that is if you are feeling overwhelmed by all that, by all the different social medias and so forth, <laughs> the only one that I know that does not allow this yet is Tumblr. There is a site called Buffer. Buffer.com. Now, there's a free version and there's a paid version. Brad, I know St. Louis Writer's Guild uses a free. So, how many? do you know how many accounts we can actually access on that one? Well, I know. It's, you can have one account for each of the different sites. So, it's like you can have one Twitter, one Facebook, one Okay, whatever. so, in other one words, LinkedIn. Well, I'm saying, okay, let me, let me go with what I'm saying. I think you're answering, but I don't think you are. <laughs> um, I, I pay for my buffer because I've got Write Pack Radio and as well as my writing and so forth. Yes. I'm sorry, what, what, what service does Buffer perform exactly? That's what I'm about to explain. Awesome. So what Buffer allows me to do is I can go on to Buffer and post my content wherever I want into my Instagram account, my Facebook accounts, meaning my main page if I want to, or I can go to my author page if I want to, or Winding Trails Media, or Facebook, uh, sorry, um, Right Pack Radio's page. I can also post that to Twitter. Again, my personal Twitter, my Right Pack Twitter, my Winding Trails Twitter. I can post it to LinkedIn. Um, and I can also paste, post it to the ghost town known as Google Plus. Uh, <laughs> it's out there. They tried. And they, they tried. It's still there. But anyway. I see that I still do it, even though it's, it's because it doesn't take me any more time. And I can spend a day and plan out the entire week of, of whatever I'm marketing out there or whatever I want to share or beyond. So you can schedule this ahead of time. It will post it for you, and you've got it taken care of. It's all handled. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, the only thing is, is I've got more accounts than what I know free allows. So that, that, that was thus my question to Brad. I wasn't sure how many we were allowed on. I'd also throw out that there's Hootsuite and things yeah. like that. You don't just need that proper. Yeah, I thought Hootsuite only did t- the Twitter. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought that was TweetDeck. No, TweetDeck does only Twitter, too. Yeah. Yeah, TweetDeck is now only Twitter. That really upset me because I enjoy TweetDeck, but yeah. whatever. There are a bunch of them out there. They're social media aggregators. Yeah. That's all you're looking for. So over to Chanel. I think you had dovetail. Yes. Or do you have dovetail? No. Okay. Okay. So dovetailing back to Jen and the idea of the free platform. Like, what would you say makes a good platform, especially since you're trying to like drum up readers, pretty much out of the cosmos with with your non paid for content. What would you say is the best way to drive people to these sites of yours? Uh, First and foremost, find your demographic. Find the people that are going to read your books. And, I mean, there's Facebook has thousands and thousands of groups that are specifically already tailored, already made, and filled with readers. So, depending on what you're writing, find that group that reads those books. Uh, Goodreads is great. Specifically because it is a massive site just for people reading. And it is just like Facebook in that it has those thousands and thousands of groups specifically for your genre or your subgenre, niche, whatever it is. They're, they are there. That's what I would say makes the best one. Is if your demographic's already there and ready and waiting for you. And it's relatively easy to get an author page up if you have mm-hmm. a book. Um, Brad? Regular, dynamic content. Yes, yes. That's all you need. Uh, and the reason I say that is that people who want to begin following you, uh, they will catch you on some random day, some retweet by somebody else, some random passing through on Tumblr, or who knows how they're going to stumble upon you. But uh, they will, and then when they go back to read more, or when they click and like on you, uh, having something coming on a regular basis, whether it's related to your book, uh, please don't make it only about your book. Uh, I have a guy that on Tumblr who, uh, it's all headshots. Um, nothing but headshots. So, 
Um, and, and not like the, the cool bullet gun, but just the regular photographic kind of thing. It didn't look, come out of my mouth. Hold on. Shot. No, wait, 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 hold on. Does he look like Tay Diggs? Because there are reasons that is perfectly no. acceptable. No, I'm afraid not. Oh. They look like Tay <laughs> Diggs. That would be much better. Who, by the way, uh, you should follow oh, on shots. Twitter, and I follow on Twitter too, and he follows me back. So. Oh, okay. Um, um, but no, no, seriously. So the, having the regular content, though, is what keeps people coming back. It's why I go to websites on Facebook on a daily basis. Uh, it's why we all go someplace, whether it's to, like, the Daily Awe, where we check out some, you know, awesome dog or cat picture, or whether it's, like, you know, uh, I effing love science, where I get to learn crazy new things in science. So. Agreed. Um, we are actually against it against the wall on our time for this episode. I am going to say again, as I said at the beginning, in a few weeks, not exactly sure when, uh, we will be airing a two-part episode on promotion. So this is really just kind of a taste, a kickoff, if you will. Um, in case we don't cover it on that, I will say, if you're going to a book signing, don't sit behind your table and hope that people come up to you. Be out there. Be trying to drum up. Even if they came in to buy somebody else's book on the bookshelf. Make a connection. Um, other places you can sell to is if you are, and this depends on your genre, our various conventions are out there. The cons, like our con we mentioned. Um, with, uh, if you really want to pay the, pay the money, um, oh god, my mind just went like Comic Con, WizCon, and Others at my mind, three or four blanks. Because I'm looking more at the time than one. Gateway Con. <laughs> Gateway Con is a is a great one, and it's a little bit of an exception because it is all open wide to all genres. Oh, yes. When is this air? Not sure. I do look. It's in, it's in June, I believe. Oh, okay. Well, then y'all will have missed me at Chanel at WizCon, but yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll be there. We'll yeah, we'll see you at Gateway Con. Then. Just in case, they will be at WizCon. Which WizCon is it? Oh, it's Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin. 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 Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of it's Wizard, not Wizard World. World. It yeah. is Wisconsin. Yeah, I just, I just want to see. I admit, yeah. here, when I when I fail, I fail terrifically. So perfect. But like, y'all should go to Wisconsin. It's just it's beautiful. And I love it. Okay. And on that note, tune in next time for yet another, another interesting topic in the writing industry. Have a great week writing, and remember, always your eyes on your goal. Take care. The new theme songs for Right Pack Radio were written and performed by Meredith Tate. All copyrights remain with her. Writers, agents, and publishers, for the first time since Gutenberg Press, find themselves lost in a maze of mystery as technology alters the shape of the publishing industry. Searching for Answers is a group of writers throwing pop culture, writing, and publishing into a crucible of clarity, passion, and humor. This group is the right path.